So let's talk about the standards in this space. Um, about 78 or so, um, the FCC said, we have to make sure we're all protected. And what they did is they said, we got to figure out what's out there in the marketplace that we have to protect. So what they decided to do is go to the Army. They went to the Army and they said, let's take this large group of adult males, typically six foot, and let's try to figure out how much heat the thermal transmission would occur. Remember the microwave? How much heat should we allow that area of the head to heat up? Then they said, how far should we let that signal go into the head? How much? They said, two inches. Thermal. Only thermal. And at the time, I, as, as I said before, I had a cell phone. I didn't call anybody because no one else had one. Now, all of a sudden, everyone uses it. So the, a casual use of a cell phone in 1987 or 86 was six minutes. I can't get my son off the phone in I, six hours, no less six minutes. All of a sudden, our pattern of use has fundamentally changed. Um, and what's the impact of that? We have a standard that protected a six-foot six foot male. At the end of the day, that's about 3% of the population using cell phones today. Only 6%, uh, 3%. And so when you give a cell phone to a female, when you give a cell phone to a teenager, when you give a cell phone to a child, the penetration is different. And we'll talk a little bit more about it, but moral of the story is a child that goes completely through the head, heating up the head. All research and science today in this space that we're worried about is the biological impact, not the thermal impact. The biological impact. That's where research is finding all the interaction between the, the, the transmissions in our bodies. It's not the thermal, it's the biological. So for that very reason alone, the SAW rate, the specific absorber rate that has become the standard, really only represents 3%, of the population, using it six minutes per day, adult male, six foot. That's what it is. And by the way, if you lived in Europe, you're protected twice. The signals, relatively speaking, are half the, exp uh, the uh, exposure to uh, uh, European than it is us. We have the highest level of transmission uh, that you can have um, for a cell phone. Um, I actually had friends of mine who went to the FCC years and years ago who represented um, the technologies. They were brilliant, brilliant engineers. And I, people that, that I personally believe were brilliant engineers. Not one of them was a biochemist. Not one of them was a medical doctor. Not one of them was a so our standards bodies that created were a bunch of electrical engineers, medical-based experts. So there was never consideration to biological, but it's sort of under I understand it because they were engineers. They weren't worried about the body's impact. Um, another sort of side note about this is current head of the FCC, um, he worked in his previous job as counsel for a fairly large um, service provider. 
he was an industry expert that went into governance of the industry. His predecessor was the head of a very, very large uh, cellular association, a, a consortium that represented uh, the um, interests of the service providers. He actually looked at what the impact was of cell phones way back when with um, a physician, epidemiologist actually, and he, he wanted to see if there was a link between cancer. This epidemiologist found a link. That guy ended up losing his sponsorship, epidemiologist, and actually his career went, went disappeared actually. And that guy, who was the chairman, went to the FCC and he approved 5G. So this is not unusual. Um, it turns out that if you look at the pharmaceuticals, all the executives that were driving the pharmacy industry became leading the governance of that. It makes some sense because they need to understand what it is they're governing. But on the other hand, they're pretty sided on the views they potentially can represent. And by the way, that's not only in the US. All the governance bodies in Europe that drive the standards have similar kind of incestuous relationship in the market. Goes through the child's head completely. It's thermal and biological. For the first time within the last 10 years, we have children using without any study on the impacts. So I'm an old guy. I can use a cell phone if it went through my head, probably wouldn't hit very much. But kids at the earliest age with biological impacts of the head, it's sort of like potentially a serious problem in time. We don't know yet. Why? Because we haven't used it much. I remember, I remember watching a, uh, a um, it was back in the 80s, early 80s, late 70s, about um, Wi-Fi. Uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was Wi-Fi. And the, no, it was smoking. It was smoking. I want to give you a set of mindset of, at the time. There were a bunch of pediatricians that asked the head of Philip Morris, is there a problem with smoking cigarettes in, when, a, when a woman has a child? And he thought about it a little bit, and he said, no, no, there's, there's, no, there's no links to any health dangers at all. But he thought about it a little bit more, and he said, but the baby's going to be smaller. What woman wouldn't want a smaller baby? That's what he said. It was accepted at the time by the audience, the pediatricians. But think about the mindset. They were destroying a child at birth before he even got out of the womb. And there was that direct correlation to smoking cigarettes that was influencing that child. Of course, we know better now. We know better because they lost in court. That's it. We, I'm not sure we'd ever known if we did, they hadn't. It's, a, it's sort of like uh, trans fats. If you think about trans fats, there was this lowly biochemist 30 years ago that said, you know, it's, it's not the eggs we're eating. It's, it, it's not the fat we're, we're absorbing. It's the trans fats that's clogging our veins. It's not, it's not the, um, the kind of thing that's when we're eating pure foods. He said it's the trans fats that's doing it. So he said 30 years ago that we shouldn't have it in our food. Guess what? Last year it was banned completely. But over that 30 years, we had consumed it. We consumed it for 30 years, and there was casualties along the way, I believe. 
directly related to the uh, trans fats in our own 